welcome to St. Thomas Aquinas College News. I'm Liz Kaminsky. And I'm Matt Cavallo. St. Thomas Aquinas College News is produced in our very own Stack TV studio. And now Liz with the week's top story. Thanks, Matt. In this week's top news, the U.S. national government remains partially shut down and at a standstill, now entering into its 10th day. The shutdown came when Congress failed to pass the usually routine spending bill. Both President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner held news conferences this week which only further magnified the impasse between the congressional GOP and the President. The President came out on Tuesday calling for Congress to pass the legislation necessary for the government to reopen so that the national debt ceiling could be raised by the October 17th deadline. If Congress fails to do so, the U.S. will default on its bills, warned Obama. The congressional GOP, however, refused to pass the legislation until Obamacare and its funding becomes a part of the negotiations. Speaking about the Republicans, Obama said they don't get to demand ransom in exchange for doing their jobs. According to the Associated Press, the president is absolutely willing to sit down with Republicans to discuss reducing deficits, but will only do so after legislation reopening the government is passed. Boehner responded to the president in his own press conference later that day. CBS reported Boehner as saying, what the president said today was if there's unconditional surrender by Republicans, he'll sit down and talk to us. On Wednesday, October 9th, Boehner took the House floor and once again issued a statement that the GOP will not back down. Our message in the House has been pretty clear. We want to reopen our government and provide fairness to all Americans under the president's health care law. You know the law had a big rollout last week, but it's been called, and I'll quote, an inexcusable mess. Since the start of the government standstill, both the president's approval rating and the Republicans' approval rating has fallen. Stay tuned with us to hear all of your latest government shutdown news. Now over to Matt for our next story. Thanks, Liz. On Tuesday, October 9th, the Supreme Court returned to decide their first case that was mostly about money and politics. The Supreme Court returned to challenge the financial reforms that were instated after the maltreatment scene in the Watergate era. The question that is being brought to the court is whether limits on individual contributions to candidates and political parties violate the First Amendment. Liberal justices defended the rules that restrict the total amount of money people can give to different candidates and political parties. According to CBS News, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said that the limits promote democratic participation, also adding, the little people will count some and you won't have to have the super affluent as the speakers will, that will control, control the elections. Conservatives, on the other hand, indicated overall limits on contributions to candidates instead go against the right of freedom of speech. The case that was brought up, the case was brought up by Alabama businessman Sean McCutcheon, who argued that he should be able to support as many candidates as he wants in the election cycle. Under this new law, he will, he hit, he will hit the contribution cap already donating the maximum 2,600 to 18 candidates. You can see how controversial the issue has become for the justices with the division between the two sides. But one thing they seem to agree on is that there was, was no interest in using this case to make a more sweeping rule that would ban or limit all campaign contributions. A, de a decision on the case will be months away from now, so now all we can do is wait. Now over to Craig with Entertainment. Thanks, Matt. Gravity, which was just released, is a 3D science fiction thriller and space drama which was co-written, co-produced, and co-edited by Alfonso Cuaron, a famous director. The stars Sandra Bullock and George Clooney act as surviving astronauts from, de from a damaged space shuttle. The film brought in a whopping $55 million to the box office, making it the biggest October opener. Well, the one pop star who never seems to go away is back with an award-winning album. Miley Cyrus released... Her new album, Bangers, and it was made the number one album on iTunes. Three of, the, three of the tracks are top hits as well. We can never seem to get enough of Disney's Hannah Montana, who is all grown up now. Now back to Matt for a special report. Thanks, Craig. College students today seek their thrills through clubs, dancing, drinking, and smoking. Despite certain laws, students continue to bend them as a way of conversation. For example, buying loose cigarettes. The average cigarette pack costs over $12 in New York. Like all college students, New York students try to buy things cheap. Today, loose cigarettes, or Lucy's, are sold for 75 cents per cigarette. 
According to Emily Epstein, a writer for Metro US, a bottle of vodka may cost $500 at a New York nightclub, but bathroom attendants risk $1,000 fines every time they sell a cigarette. Cigarettes are getting more and more expensive, especially in the city. People that sell loose cigarettes can be charged with unlicensed vending under city law. According to Metro US, first-time untaxed tobacco offenders are hit with a fine and repeat offenders are charged with a felony. Everybody who drinks and smokes wants to have a cigarette, but no one wants to pay ridiculous prices for them. Until Lucy's are considered legal, college students' best option is to stay away from them. Now over to Liz with her story, for their news story. Thanks, Matt. So now over in the world of sports, it was a pretty rough week for New Yorkers. <laughs> Unless, of course, you are a Jets fan. The Jets played the Atlanta Falcons Monday night, and it was an exciting game for both team fans, keeping fans on the edge of their seats. Geno Smith certainly delivered for the Jets, throwing three touchdown passes, the rookie's career high. In the end, the Jets beat the Falcons 30-28 to with a 43-yard kick goal as time expired. This put the Jets' season at 3-2. and two. Unlike the Jets, the Giants remain in a slump with an 0-5 season. The Giants lost once again this past weekend to the Philadelphia Eagles, 36-21, adding to their losing streak. Will they finally be able to get a win against the Chicago Bears this week? We'll have to wait and see. Hockey season has just begun, but it's been a rocky start for the New York Rangers. The Rangers lost their most recent game to the San Jose Sharks, putting them at 1-2 and two for the start of the season. We'll be watching the Rangers take on the Anaheim Ducks tonight to see if they can even the score. The New Jersey Devils have also had a rough time of it, considering they have yet to win a game this season. Perhaps they will finally be able to have a win this Friday against the Calgary Flames. That's all the time we have for sports. That's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us. I am Matt Cavallo. And I'm Liz Kaminsky. See you next time.